Hi, fifth graders. Now you are on uh, section 1D, Atomic Math. This section requires you to understand some of the things that you learned in the Brain Pop video. So if that was a little bit unclear, you might need to go back and review that if you start to get a little lost here. One of the beautiful things about this grid method is that you can take the time that you need in order to master this activity. So if you're not understanding it as I go through it, don't panic. You can watch it as many times as you need to. You can turn your cone red and I can come over and help you in person. You can also get help from other kids in the class. So I don't want you to panic. At first, this is going to seem kind of hard because it's brand new information, but I want you to stick with it and work on it as long as it takes in order for you to achieve mastery. So what this page shows us is this shows us a little bit about atoms. What we can do is we can look at this box right here and we can we can see that it comes from this table called the periodic table of the elements. You may have seen this before. It's a common poster you see hanging up in science rooms um, and it is something that a lot of kids get really excited about. We're going to come back to the periodic table of elements in level four, but right now I want you to understand that the box that we're going to be looking at on section 1-4 comes from this table. You'll see this periodic table here has 118 elements on it and we're going to just concentrate on a couple of those 118 elements in this class. So let's go back to our atomic math page and let's try to figure out how is each box in the periodic table put together. So here you'll see we have a box that represents the element oxygen. So there's all these different parts inside the box. We have a number, a letter, the name of the element, and then another number down here. So what I'm going to show you right now is the code for how to crack and figure out what's going on in this box and how you can use that to help you figure out what an atom of oxygen looks like, how many protons, how many electrons, and how many neutrons that atom has can be figured out just by looking at this box. So let's first figure out what the names of these parts of this box are. This number at top is called something, uh, it's called an atomic number. While you're watching this video, you should have paper 1D in front of you, something to write with, and you should be writing down exactly the things that I write down in purple on your screen. Okay, so that letter, that number at the top is the atomic number. This letter O, is what we call an atomic symbol. And that is usually one or two letters to represent the kind of element that we're talking about. Down here we have the element's name pointing to oxygen. And then this number at the bottom is called the atomic mass. Now what that means is that one single atom of oxygen is going to weigh 16 atomic mass units. So one atom of oxygen weighs 16 atomic mass units. Uh, so we can round this number down here to the nearest whole number. So don't worry too much about those digits right here after the decimal. So the atomic number, this number up here, tells us a few things. It tells us how many protons are in an atom of oxygen. It also tells us how many electrons are in an atom of oxygen. So over here, I'm going to write that down for your notes. The atomic number equals the number of protons or number of electrons. Okay. Atomic mass, this number down here, tells you how heavy that atom is. And so we can figure that out by looking at the number of protons, oopsie, protons plus the number of neutrons. So in section 1C, before you did this, you got a chance to build some atoms on your iPad on the FET site. So you got to see what they looked like. You got to see that the protons and the neutrons are in the middle of the atom in what we call the nucleus and the electrons orbit around the outside. Now something you can't tell by looking at those models that you were building is that 
the electrons are teeny teeny tiny compared to the protons and neutrons. So you might have been curious about why the mass of the atom equals only the protons plus the neutrons. And that's because the electrons are so tiny that they don't count in the mass of the atom. It's like, think of an elephant. Elephant is a giant animal. Something you might not know about elephants is that they actually do have a little bit of hair on their bodies. If you look on the back of an elephant, you'll see some hair up there. Um, and those hairs are super, super tiny compared to the mass of the whole elephant. Like if you pull one hair off of an elephant, it's not really gonna change the mass of that elephant very much. Very similar to an atom. If you pull one electron off of an atom of oxygen, you're really not gonna change the mass of it because the electron is so tiny compared to the rest of the atom. So there's another bit of notes that I would like you to write down right now before we start practicing what we've just learned. The other bit of notes is gonna help you finish the rest of this page. So something I want you to write down is, I want you to write down that the number of protons plus the number of neutrons equals the atomic mass. So we're gonna try to write that here. Um, number of protons, plus plus number of neutrons e equals atomic mass. That's just us kind of rewriting what we have over here. Now we can rearrange this equation to figure out the number of neutrons. So the number of neutrons would be equal to the atomic mass minus the number of protons. Okay, this sounds like a lot of information. But what we're gonna do now is we are gonna practice applying it to these boxes that we would see on the periodic table. So the first step, you'll see we have several of these. We have this page and then we have a page after that to fill in. It'll give you lots of practice and it'll help you understand. So what you'll notice is that here's a box, here's a box of a different element, here's a box from a different element, and you'll notice that there's one thing missing in each box. Up here we learned there are four things in each box on the periodic table. The first thing you have to figure out is which one's missing. So our first one's pretty easy because we've already done oxygen. So our name is missing, so we're just going to go ahead and write in the name for oxygen. Then. Following our key that we have up here, we can see the atomic number. Atomic number is that first number at the top. So the atomic number for oxygen, pretty straightforward, is going to be eight. The atomic mass for oxygen is the number at the bottom of the table. And remember, we're always gonna round to whole numbers. So we can just write down 16 for the atomic mass of oxygen. Then, the number of protons, we learned up here, the atomic number equals the number of protons, or the number of electrons. So whatever number we see up here for the atomic number is going to be the same as the number of protons. So we're going to go ahead and write down that oxygen has eight protons to match the atomic number. By chance, it also happens to have eight electrons. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down eight electrons because we also know the atomic number equals the number of electrons. Down here, we have one more thing to figure out, the number of neutrons. So that's this equation that I had to write up here. The number of neutrons equals the atomic mass minus the number of protons. So in our case for oxygen, it would be the atomic mass is 16 minus the number of protons, which is the um, 8. So we have 16 minus 8 equals 8. Now we're ready to move on to an example that we haven't done yet. This is the element zinc. It's written kind of funny with a space there. I have no idea why. Sorry. But I don't expect you to know what zinc's um, atomic symbol is off the top of your head. So I'd like you to go ahead and refer to a periodic table. Uh, you can find the periodic table in bin 1D, where you found the rest of the stuff for this activity. Um, I'm also going to put an electronic copy on Romanet that you can access on your iPad. 
So here, we want to find zinc on the periodic table. But if we click on the periodic table, we're like, whoa, I don't want to have to look through all 118 elements to find it. That's going to take a lot of time. So what we can do is we can see that zinc's atomic number is 30. That's going to give us a big clue for finding it on the periodic table. Up here, we've got the atomic number 1, atomic number 2, 3, 4. They go in order, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if you keep following that order, you're going to eventually hit number 30. There it is, zinc. And zinc's atomic symbol is capital Z, lowercase n. The capital letters and lowercase letters do make a difference here, so please make sure you're following that. So zinc's atomic symbol is capital Z, lowercase n. The atomic number, you can probably guess what it is. If you forget, look up here. What's it pointing to? The number on top. The number on top for zinc is 30. Okay, the atomic mass, the number on the bottom. Atomic mass for zinc, the number on the bottom, 65.39. But remember, I said we can round to the nearest whole number. So 65.39 is much closer to 65 than it is to 66. So that's our atomic mass. The number of protons is the same as the atomic number. That's equal to 30. The number of electrons is going to match the number of protons and match the atomic number. That's 30. The number of neutrons is going to be the atomic mass minus the number of protons. So we're going to have 65 minus 30, which equals 35. And that's zinc. Okay, now you're going to need to find number 3 lithium. On the periodic table, number 3. Lithium, Li. Let's go back and we'll write down the name of that element. So lithium. So our atomic number is the number at the top of the box. In lithium's case, it's going to be 3. The atomic mass is the number at the bottom of the box. For lithium, it is going to be 7. Because remember, we're rounding to the nearest whole number. The number of protons is going to be the same as the atomic number. That's going to be 3. The number of electrons is going to be the same as the atomic number, 3. The number of neutrons is going to be equal to the atomic mass minus the number of protons. So it's going to be 7 minus 3 equals 4. Now you have lots of more of these to practice with, and when you're done, you are going to get a key from me. I'll have them with me. And you're going to correct your own paper and follow the instructions on the self-evaluation for 1D. It's really, really important for you to analyze the mistakes that you make, what kind of mistakes they are, in order for you to understand how to fix those mistakes. So, good luck. Go back and watch parts of this video if you need to. And if you're still stumped, please turn your cone red and I will help you. Good luck.